Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome to, this may be the last few review I do for today, or tonight, In the Line of Fire. This is another viewer request by Anger9172, and for this film here. Now, In the Line of Fire, basically, my nose is itching, that's why I'm doing that. Watching this film again, the nice thing about do, doing this viewer request thing is that you get to revisit films that you haven't seen in a long time and really just come to enjoy them once again. Uh, like Toy Soldiers was one of them. And this film, and if you're wondering where that clinking's from, I want to make sure when this film came out. And I should have done that before. Uh, 1993. And it's directed by Wolfgang Peterson. Now, Wolfgang Peterson... <laughs> lately, I mean... Then, well, I think he's doing something now. And before that was Poseidon. Which I don't really remember liking Poseidon too much. I don't remember being the biggest fan of Poseidon. Maybe it's one of those films I have to see again. But I just don't remember being the biggest fan of Poseidon. Um, then Troy, which I haven't seen. But in the 90s, even in the 80s, I mean, he did Never Ending Story, he did Enemy Mine, and then in the 90s, he made a few films I enjoyed, like Air Force One, which is also on there. Uh, Outbreak with Dustin Hoffman, love Outbreak, and this one. And this film, watching it again, just, again, makes me see how really quality filmmaking can make such an enjoyable experience. Even though this is over two hours long, it's still a very solid thriller, drama slash thriller. Clint Eastwood is a uh, works with the Secret Service. He was there when Kennedy was shot, but he wasn't able to save him, so he kind of has lived with the guilt of that failure. And you really feel sorry for Clint Eastwood's character, and basically he lives by himself, has his new partner, which is Dylan McDermott. In the beginning, they deal with this thing with counterfeiters, which is, I guess that is a thing that Secret Service agents do. They do some undercover work. And Dylan McDermott gets put in and a bay put on his head, and they want Clint Eastwood to shoot him, and he does, and gun's empty. And Clint Eastwood, can I get my pistol now? And gets in, shoots the others, saves Dylan McDermott, and actually the counterfeiter guy, the lead guy, is Tobin Bell. Jude saw himself, so it's kind of weird seeing that today. Oh, it's J Clint Eastwood fucked up Jude saw. <laughs> he didn't kill him, but he tore him, you know, beat him. <laughs> hey, if one guy's going to be Jude saw, might as well be Clint Eastwood. Fucking Dirty Harry. But, basically, they go on this sort of routine where you know, they get people who are maybe we wackos or have threats for the president's life. So the, this landlady saw all these clips of assassinations and JFK and stuff like that. She called police and contacted Secret Service. And they get, like, a lot of death threats for the president per year. So they got to visit every single one as part of their job description. So Clint Eastwood looks at that, and then he comes back with Dylan McDermott, and all the photos are gone except one. And it's one of Clint Eastwood from back in that day in 1963 by the Texas Book Depository. And John Malkovich starts calling Clint Eastwood and starts having this sort of mind game, cat and mouse. And both Clint Eastwood and John Malkovich, which I guess reading up on, they actually wanted Robert De Niro to play the John Malkovich role. But he was doing that film, A Bronx Tale, which I haven't seen, but he was busy doing that, so he couldn't do it. Now, I love John Malkovich. He did an excellent job in this film. But I couldn't help but think, man, Clint Eastwood versus Robert De Niro. I would love to have seen that. Definitely a, at least a curiosity piece. Again, John Malkovich did a great job, but it would have been awesome to see Robert De Niro in 1993. I mean, that wasn't too far away from Kate Fear, so, you know, that would have been interesting. Did around this time, didn't he do The Fan? I know it was, I think it was a few years later he did The Fan. I don't know, but it would have been interesting. But John Malkovich 
pulls it off. He's very creepy. I think this is John Malkovich's best performance. Very creepy, very... Just very evil bad guy, but also very smart. You know, saying how much he kind of respects Clint Eastwood and getting him into his game. And Clint Eastwood wants to be part of the protecting the president. And you get the sense that Clint Eastwood, at least he's really showing his age, meaning they really put that into the character and it makes a lot of sense. So he's with the motorcade and he's huffing and puffing and almost out of it. Um, the phone call scenes between Clint Eastwood and John Malkovich are very intense. The dialogue is very well written. There's a scene later on where, you know, Malkovich says, I have a rendezvous with death. And so does the president. And so do you, if you deal my way. And he was like, yeah, you have a rendezvous with my ass, motherfucker. <laughs> I love Clint Eastwood talking like that. And he did some fun, uh, what's nice about this film, it balances a lot of things out. Balance a little bit of action. Um, definitely not action pad. You know, don't go inspecting a dirty, hairy film. But you also have a little bit of romance with uh, her, him and Rene Russo, who's another Secret Service agent. And I'm a fan of Rene Russo. I liked her in Outbreak and Lethal Weapon 3 in this film. Uh, and they play off of each other very well. Like they're having ice cream by the Lincoln Memorial and she walks and Clint was like, if she turns around, like she's into me. Come on, turn around. And she does. And he smiles. And looks at the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, I wish I was there to help you, pal. Well, I wish I was there for you, pal. And this is very fun, uh, very well-written dialogue. The guy who wrote this, Jeff McGuire. Now, I'm going to look at what else Jeff McGuire has done. Apparently, the script has been around for well over a decade, from what I... The special features aren't too much. I mean, you have a director's commentary, which Grant I didn't listen to, by Wolfgang Peterson. And then you have some features like The Ultimate Sacrifice and The Line of Fire, which goes a little bit behind the scenes, but not too much, to be honest, uh, which was kind of disappointing. It's 20 minutes long. You don't have any new interviews with Rene Russo or Clint Eastwood or anything like that. Kind of little snippets from back in the day. Um, yeah, behind... Then they do a lot of features about the actual Secret Service, which I don't care about the actual Secret Service. I want to care about the movie. It kind of reminds me of The Running Man, where you want to know more about the movie, but they kind of more on, oh, the actual, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't care. Um, I forget, I want to mention a great score, by the way, by Ennio Morricone. I'm like, oh, shit, he did the score to this. It was kind of cool, you know, Ennio Morricone, Clint Eastwood, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, that type of stuff. And him do another Clint Eastwood film. Good score. Jeff McGuire, uh, he did the script Victory, also known as Escape to Victory, Sylvester Sloan. And this film actually got a Oscar nomination for Best Original Screenplay, Richly Deserved. That's nice. In the Line of Fire went to a bidding war between Tom Cruise, Sean Connery, and Clint Eastwood. Wow. Prior to this, um, I guess it doesn't happen. I one time was going to do it, but then, unfortunately, didn't do it. Uh, Says Dustin Hoffman added the hero's guilt over failing to save JFK when he had the script. <clears throat> Tom Cruise's people demanded this be deleted because a 28-year-old hero would not be around for JFK. If it was Tom Cruise, like I guess it really got from Tom Cruise to Clint Eastwood. I'm glad Clint Eastwood did it because if Tom Cruise, it wouldn't have that sense of depth and the drama. Which I'm into it when it really hurts me with the lead actor, Clint Eastwood, doing an awesome job, solid supporting cast, very intense villain. I get hooked with it. And the fact that you also have, you know, John Malkovich sort of goading him saying, you know, would you have taken the bullet, you know? Um, would you have done it, you know, if you had the chance? So you have these mind games, and you have certain moments where 
they like there's a scene where Eastwood has the flu and he thinks he hears a shot, but it was actually a balloon um blowing up. Um I probably won't go too in depth in the well probably too late. Definitely check out the film though. It's really solid. Uh again you have some fun scenes like the almost sex scene, like in the Rene Russo and Clint Eastwood, they're taking off their guns and handcuffs and stuff and they're on the bed and Rene Russo gets a phone call and she has to leave and Clint Eastwood goes back and then he goes I gotta put all this shit back on. God damn it. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. So you did some fun humor but also did some serious drama like when Dylan McDermott and Clint Eastwood are chasing John Malkovich at one point and Clint Eastwood tries to jump from one building to another and doesn't succeed and John Malkovich tries to take my hand or you'll die. Takes his hand, Clint Eastwood puts a gun and he goes, well you don't shoot me? And then actually does that so it puts his mouth in the gun because he knows that Eastwood won't shoot him. And ultimately helps Clint Eastwood aside, but then Del McDermott has a gun on him and Del McDermott gets still killed, so Eastwood's partner gets killed. I think that's the thing, the, the villain has a little bit, he wants to play this game. And these are really interesting villains, they're very evil, like when he's assuming an identity and working with the savings, banging with this girl, he kind of has a follow-up. Like, he kind of messes up a little bit, so he follows the woman home, and there's another woman there. And he kills them and just breaks both their necks. Ooh, you know, it's not gory, but just the sound effects and just these nice women just boom, boom, breaks both their necks. There's another scene where he actually made a plastic gun, like a zip gun, and he's using it. And hunters come back, oh, what's that? He said, what are you going to use this for to kill the president? And they're like, and why are you going to do that, mister? And I think John Madrid says, and why do you sh well, why do you shoot that bird, asshole? Takes the gun, boom, shoots them both, and ooh. This is really hardcore, cold-blooded. Just really solid stuff. And you did actually get some other actors. You got, uh, like I said, Tolan Bell. John Hurd is in a small role. As this professor guy who was in the, I think he was in the models, and it's one of the guys they have to talk to to sort of find the identity of John Malkovich's character. And there's also, I want to get the guy's name, I can't believe I forgot it off the top of my head because I'm an idiot. You find out that John Malkovich's character was, at one time, used to work for the CIA as an assassin. It's what they call a wet boy. That was their name for it, but he was an assassin. And the CIA guy, I can't believe I forgot his fucking name, God. Steve Railsback. How could I forget his name? Steve Railsback is in this film. I forgot about that. Steve Railsback, of course, played Ed Dean. I think he was the best guy to play Ed Dean. I've seen him episodes on the X Files. Uh, Life Force. He was in Life Force. Steve Railsback has been in a few films. Because I see him in there. And they don't really trust these work because he followed up a few times. Oh, he's past his prime. One guy even says. You just, you're too old for this shit. <laughs> but what makes this film great is the the relationship between Eastwood and Malkovich. A wonderful hero and a wonderful villain. Great, I'm one of those guys that even if you have a sucky villain, if I have a great hero, I'm fine with it. But it's an added bonus when you get a hero and a villain. Both are pretty complex individuals. You have fun dialogue, either of humor or intensity. <clears throat> and a great ending where uh, Wolfgang Peterson does a solid job directing. Like when they're at the final banquet where the president's at. And Eastwood's looking at the seating chart and sees it. And the way it pushes in Clint Eastwood's eyes and pushes to Malkovich. The way that's done, really solid directing by Wolfgang Peterson. I really liked his directing Air Force One and... and uh, outbreak um, but I don't know what else I can say about this film other than it's very satisfying from beginning to end it's a great drama it has some good bits of humor has a great cast awesome hero and villain 
Sal's Grub at Ennio Morcone. Uh, fun. The romance works between him and Rene Russo, but it's not too much to throw the rest of the movie out. Um, there's little bits of humor that made, made me laugh. I, again, I can't, I love when Glenys was like, yeah, run if you with my ass, motherfucker. Yeah. Or, John Malkovich is talking to Eastwood another time, and he's like, well, you feel that when I'm pissing on your grave. Or there's another scene where uh, paramedics supposedly were called because Eastwood's kid was having a heart attack, and they're getting at him, he's like, oh, what, what the hell's going on? Say, like, well, we heard you having a heart attack. What are you doing here? He's like, well, I'm on my break. And then everybody's laughing. He's like, each was like, okay, who's the wise guy? <laughs> and everybody's laughing. It was kind of a funny scene, too. But characters that have depth, acting that's very style spot on, on their A game. Definitely one of Eastwood's best performances and Malkovich's best performances. Uh, Great score, direction, kept, kept, really keeps you involved. I know I started there. And I don't know what I can say, but In the Line of Fire is just, a, without a doubt, one of my favorite Clint Eastwood films. I looked up because I was, I don't own too many Clint Eastwood. I mean, Dirty Harry films are great. But when away from the Dirty Harry films, even including some Dirty Harry films, this is, without a doubt, one of Eastwood's best. Without a doubt. And I think this is one of the last films he actually did that he did not direct. Because I think all the other films after this, he directed himself. Like the Absolute Power, Bloodward, Space Cowboys, uh, uh, you know, Gran Torino, stuff like that. But, uh, which is kind of weird, because really, this is the best film, this is the best film he's done. Well, almost 20 years. 2013 is not too far away, so. 93, so. I like some of the stuff later, but this is definitely the best film in the past 20 years from Eastwood. And I'm glad they got Eastwood. Sean Connery, and especially not Tom Cruise. Eastwood fit it very well. Played the humor well, but played the guilt well. Satisfying finale. Just great fucking movie. If you haven't seen it in a while, definitely check in the line of fire out again. Special features, eh. I don't know. I do like the, the teaser, which I guess looking up, I guess preview audiences really hated it. But it's like a clock. It's like 1963, and it's like a phone call between Eastwood and Malkovich, and as the clock ticks, the six turns to a nine, so it's 1993. And it's like, you don't want to um, be responsible for another death of a president again. And Clint Eastwood like, gets a gun and looks at the camera. Well, that's not going to happen. I guess maybe if people thought it was too cheesy or stuff, but it was kind of nice seeing that little nostalgia. You can actually find it on YouTube. But, uh, Solid movie. I know I just hit myself in the head. It was so good. I want to see it again. Mem mesmerize it. <laughs> but it's pretty late. Maybe that's why I'm a little bit goofy. But either way, thanks for watching and take care. Later.